Hello, everybody, and welcome to Turn to Page 31, the werewolf of Twisted Tree Lodge. How are we doing, Rhapsody? Doing quite well. How about yourself, Rita? Oh, good. He looks... Okay, <laughs> cover. Already? He yep. looks quite angry, but there's something about the dissonance of how cozy his uh, buffalo check pajama pants look. And his mm-hmm. Where's Waldo esque shirt. There's something about that. That he just seems For our seems like a nice Australian guy. listeners. That's Where's Wally. Sorry, Where's Wally? Well, uh, you, you don't need to apologize. You are 100 so percent correct sorry. for the vast majority of the people listening to this. I was going to describe it as a Where's Wally t-shirt as well. It's just I realized when you said Waldo that I would have then fallen afoul of this in the opposite direction, where yeah. upwards of 90% of the people listening would not remember it as Wally. The fact of the matter, I agree though, is that he just looks angry that we've interrupted yes. his cozy time. Yes. I feel I don't feel scared by this cover. I feel, I, I guess, anxious. I feel like I am c- causing social impropriety yeah. in this man's comfortable, cozy evening. I feel embarrassed. I feel embarrassed. Yes! Like, it's on me. Sorry, sir. You get back to your reading. Here's a bone. Here's, you know, the blood of some innocents. Get back to your cozy mm-hmm. little reading nook. Uh, but also worth noting, it's not Mark Nagara. It's Craig White. Which it is. There may have been other ones in the past that have been different artists, but this is the first time I've at least taken note, and it's been visually like on the screen. But mm-hmm. I like the direction of this, Craig. The final thing I will say about the man is that uh, when a werewolf has you know it, it, drops of drool connecting the top and bottom fangs of their open mouth. Yeah. Right? The thing you're expecting to come out of their mouth is like a something like that. You know, the werewolf noises. However, I'm 100% certain the next sound we're going to hear is, um, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, and I am so much less ready for him that. <laughs> it's true. Either way, at least it's a nice comforting cover of a snarling werewolf compared to last week where it was just that creepy buoy. But alas. Mm-hmm. Let's get on in. I, I'm ready to get cozy in a in a lodge. It's just a, yet another werewolf book in the series, which I don't know. I just I have very fond memories of the last one, so I got high hopes. You know that easily could be Werewolf Todd. I hope it is. Oh, could be. Beware! <laughs> Do not read this book from beginning to end. All right, you won a contest. Your prize is a trip to the Horror Writers' Convention at Twisted Tree Lodge. The only problem is, the horror at the lodge is all too real. Like that strange howling you keep hearing, and the sinister man in a black cape. What about the strange manuscript pages you keep finding? Pages that seem to predict your future? Can you learn the secret of Twisted Tree Lodge before it's too late? Yes. Uh, Rito! What? This book... This book became a video game by Remedy Studios called Alan Wake, I think. This is Alan oh Wake. Oh my goodness. We're doing it. <laughs> it's the Alan Wake. The pre-Alan Wake. I've always wanted to play that game again, again. This, this was left in the wake of Alan Wake. But let's get on. To, <laughs> that's all that deserved. <laughs> let's get on to page one. Last stop, Twisted Tree Lodge. The bus driver's booming voice startles you. You must have dozed off. Finally, you mutter under your breath. Last stop, the only stop is more like it, and the bus driver didn't need to yell. You're the only passenger on this freezing hunk of junk. You open your duffel bag and toss in the video game you've been playing, Alan Wake. (laughs) <laughs> on Steam Deck. <laughs> it lands on top of a couple of candy bars, a rubber band ball, and your short story. The Revenge of the Werewolves. This is the story that won the first prize for best horror story at the school book fair. As the winner, you get all an all-expenses-paid trip to a horror story convention at the Twisted Tree Lodge. All the best-known horror writers will be there. Cool. Except for one thing. You didn't write the story. Go to page two. 
Wow. A twist Did that's we not plagiarize? the Yeah, I mean I'm curious. A twist that's not like the obvious scary titular cover twist on page one is pretty cool. Also, are we taking bets on if the most famous horror writers in the world will include one R.L. Stein, <laughs> perhaps? I think it's going to be not exactly R.L. Stein, but there's going to be like a, a J.M. Cup or something, you know, like as as goosebumps a punchline of that version as you can get. I'm gonna there might say, even be like a Stephen Queen. Oh, that could be. I'm going to say there's going to be my my money's on real R L Stein, just straight up <laughs> R L real Stein. life Stein. That's what R L real stands life for. Stein. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be a real life Stein, no alterations in the name, and a fake writer to go with it. Mm. So okay. yeah, that's that's where my money's at. Just because of how shameless they are with calling out literally goosebumps by name in other books is mm -hmm. why I'm feeling like they might just say and most famous author in the world, real life Stein. Yep. But hey, we'll very see. fair. Just seeing the story makes you feel guilty. You found it in the school garbage bin. As a joke, you wrote your name at the top. Good joke. You never even read it. Then you lost it somewhere. Next thing you knew, your name was being announced as the winner of the best horror story contest. Now here you are, riding along the dark cliffs in a snowstorm to claim your prize. The prize you know really is not yours. Thus is the end for you, the bus driver announces. He brings the bus to a jerky stop. Did he have to put it that way? You grab your bag and get off. The bus pulls away, leaving you in a cloud of exhaust. Uh, what? An enormous, gnarled tree looms ahead of you. You spot a banner hanging from the lodge behind it. Welcome to the Twisted Tree Lodge, home to horror. Go to page three. Some welcome, you mutter. Where is everybody? A movement in the bushes startles you. A man dressed in black emerges from the shadows. His black hat is pulled down so low that you can't see his face. He carries a black briefcase. Suddenly, his case flies open. Manuscript pages oh, pour no. out. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! He cries. A gust of wind swirls the papers around the grounds of the lodge. Oh, the story! The man exclaims. Several pages land at your feet. You kneel down and scan them. You seem to be part of a horror story. Is the man in black one of the famous writers that you're supposed to meet? You glance up and discover the man has vanished. Hey! You call out. You forgot your... Then you shrug. He's already gone. I have solved the whole book. Mm hmm? I'll tell you later. I don't want to ruin it. I have solved, I've, solved, I've solved the entire book, actually, already. <laughs> um, sorry. I, uh, you forgot your... Then you shrug, and he's already gone. You look at the top of the page of your crumpled pile. It's titled... It's the title page of a story called The Revenge of the Werewolves. Your mouth drops open. That's the name of your winning story. Well, your fake winning story. You continue reading. A kid wins a contest, just like you, and arrives at a lodge, just like you. It's all here. Even the man in the briefcase. You gasp at the real as the realization hits you. You're actually living out this story right now. Turn to page 62. Well, better pull out a pen and write your name at the top of this. Yeah. <laughs> R.L. <All right. laughs> We're the Stein? I see it. Hmm. How, how how can this be? You stammer, glancing around at the down at the pages. How can anyone know all this and put it into a story? If the author knows the past, you wonder if he knows the future too. You frantically, I mean, <laughs> there's a really big stretch about knowing what has happened and what will happen. A, well, I mean, we have to presume at some point that he knew what will happen when writing this story, unless yes. we expect that exactly up until the moment he encountered us, he was furiously writing it. Exactly. But it's just, I like the thought of just me sitting here going, well, 
I mean, it's it's absolutely terrifying that I knew knew what happened to me yesterday. That means I <laughs> probably know what's going to happen tomorrow. It's just yep. like, I mean, it, it, I do. But, <laughs> the logic hey. here does not does not hold. It, it does not quite. I mean, it's not. It, it would be obviously, yeah. How does he know? Because he wasn't there. Presumably, it, that's the part that's scary. It, it, but, you know, I want to learn about the future, so I'm going to go to a museum. If yeah. they know the past, <laughs> the they pa must yeah. have flying cars. I've heard that the past repeats itself, so I think that next mm. year we're going to discover fire. Ooh, hell yeah. Prometheus is going to get punished for that. Yeah. I'm really hoping that 2023 will be the year of the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> If, if the author knows the path, you want if he knows the future, too. You frantically turn to another page in the story. You want to take this? Absolutely. They're all doomed. Everyone at the lodge will be destroyed. Just as writers destroy the werewolves and every other creature in the night, in every horror written, story written, those who read or write horror will face those same horrors and those same fears. Tonight will be Revenge of the Werewolves. And the only ones who will know this story are the ones who wrote it. And the one who reads it now. Turn to page eight. This is a prize-winning story? You start to laugh. <laughs> I could have written something better than this. So much for finding out the future. No way did you really believe the story was predicting the future. All that stuff at the beginning was just coincidence. Eh, you think. The story could never have won the contest. It's too boring. Writers being hunted by their own creations? Readers facing the same horrors? Too weird. Too niche. Not in today's society, no. No one would believe it. Still, the man in black with the briefcase would probably want it back. You climb the steps of the huge lodge. The door is locked. You lift the heavy door knocker. Whoa! You exclaim. The knocker is intricately, uh, intricately carved. <laughs> an intricately carved wolf head. It looks so real, almost like he could bite you. As you wait for someone to open the door, you spot the man in black. He slinks through the hedges and turns a corner. Hey! You call after him, holding up the manuscript pages. But he doesn't seem to hear you. Should you go after him, or should you first let the contest people know you're here? Run to the lodge on ten... Run after the man in black, turn to page 40. Uh, I mean, I have a strong pull. I would love to hear it. I would like to run after the man in black because it is Do the it. action that is happening to us and not, ah, yes. Oh, well, let's go back to the lodge. <laughs> it, it just feels more natural. I don't know. It definitely feels more natural. There is part of me that, that thinks like, surely that can't respond to us for this is a pre-written story and he didn't previously but who knows who knows uh you decide to go after the man in black you figure he must be one of the horror writers maybe a real life horror writer he'll be worried about losing these pages maybe if you give them back to him now he'll be so grateful that he'll give you a reward or at least go easier on you if he finds out you didn't really write the prize-winning story. You dump your duffel bag on the front porch. You stick the pages to you in your parka pockets ooh, and dash around the side of the lodge. The man is nowhere in sight. Hey! You call out. No answer. You discover a trail of papers. The man in black must have dropped them. You pick the pages up and glance at them. They don't make any sense, just rhymes and random sentences. No page numbers, nothing's in any order. You read the first line on one wrinkled page out loud. I'm in big trouble now? You're not kidding! A voice from above says. You peer up at the lodge. A boy your age dangles from a knotted sheet hanging out a window two floors above you. What are you doing? You call up to him. Trying to escape! The boy replies, turn to page six. Escape? You repeat. Why? The boy shimmies down the sheet. He drops down beside you. Let me tell you, something weird is going on here. The boy tells you. 
this whole place is creeping with crawlies. Scary, horrible creatures. You raise an eyebrow. This kid has some imagination. Why do you say that? He glances around nervously. Ah, uh, I won a contest. He replies. And when I arrived, a strange woman locked me in a room. I heard a blast some guy for having too many characters in his story. She said he had to get rid of a couple of them. That doesn't sound very suspicious. You protest. Although, it's weird that the woman locked him in. That's not normal. The boy glares at you. Yeah? Well, then this guy barged into my room. I tried to run out. He told me to stay put until the other characters arrived. Then, he'd take care of both of us. And that's when he grabbed me. I noticed his fingers looked like claws. Claws? You repeat. What did this guy look like? Like that! The boy exclaims, pointing up at the lodge. Leaning out the window is the same man who dropped the manuscript pages. The man in black. Turn to page 110. Johnny Cash starts performing. Ooh. Da boy ducks bum, 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 behind. Oh, a huge boulder. Yeah, I thought, we were, I thought this was the finally the day we got the uh, the music backing. <laughs> uh, you're left standing alone in plain view. There you are. The man in black calls down to you from the window. I see you found my manuscript. Great, I really need those pages. Bring them around to the front, won't you? Don't do it. The boy whispers from his hiding place. Your only chance is to get away now. Come on inside. The man shouts. It's getting dark. I'll meet you at the front door and let you in. I want those pages. Trust me. The boy crawls towards the woods. You don't want to go in there. Trust him? You just met him. Still, the kid seems genuinely afraid. Could this story be true? You gaze up at the window from where you're standing. You can't tell if the man in black has claws or just regular old fingernails. Tough choice. Should you follow the kid into the dark, spooky woods, or should you go into the lodge and face the mysterious man in black? If you go to the lodge, page 86. If you follow the boy into the woods, 130. you have a pull? I, I have an equal strength pull in both directions. I want to follow the boy into the woods because that seems the correct choice. He just described that this man has claws. I don't know. It seems worthwhile. Also, he's in a similar position to us, right? We didn't offer that we'd won a contest to come to this location. He offered that voluntarily of his own. However, he could also be on the inside. I don't know. I'm happy either way. I'm happy either way. I just, I think that one of these could easily just lead could lead to a death i i don't know i don't know we might still be early enough on where it could be the big tree branch uh yet but i i feel like it's the right thing to follow the boy but i feel i feel more interested in the lodge itself as a character if that, that then. if that makes sense okay 86 let's head into the lodge I like it. The Lodge is my favorite character. You decide to go into the Lodge. The woods look too dark and too scary. And the boy has already disappeared from sight. Come around to the front. The man calls to you again. And you be careful with those pages. They're my whole future. So he really is one of the writers. These pages must be from his next book. Too bad they don't make any sense, you think. You stuff the pages into your parka and dash around to the front. As you approach the porch, you're surprised to see a woman with long black hair grabbing your duffel bag. Hey! You shout. That's my stuff! That's all right, dearie. The woman replies in a low, raspy voice. I'm just bringing it inside for you. Come on in, we've been waiting for you. You follow her into the lobby of the lodge. Sign in, please. She instructs you, pointing to a large black book on the reception desk. You're about to write your name in the book when you spot a name on the line above. Corey McKenzie. The name has been crossed out. Go to page 137. Hmm. 
The woman notices you staring at the name in the book. Corey McKenzie, she sneers. He was here under false pretenses. False pretenses? You repeat? What's that? Oh, he <laughs> didn't really write the winning story. The woman replies. So, of course, we had him separated from the rest. Only genuine masters of horror can participate in this gathering, and I'm sure you agree. You gulp. You hope she doesn't find out that you didn't write your winning story either. Did, uh, did you just send him home? You ask. Let's just say he's been taken care of. The woman answers. An evil smile crosses her face. What does that mean, you wonder? The man in black appears at the top of the stairs. Do you have the pages? He doesn't even give you time to answer. He dashes down the stairs and reaches into your parka. Hey! You cry. He sure is pushy. He pulls out a handful of pages. Uh, did, 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 did you get all of them? I, I think. You stammer. Forget the pages. The woman interrupts. We've got work to do. Things are getting strange. Maybe they'll be less weird on page 128. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the genuine progression of a Goosebumps novel. Less weird each page. Yeah, less weird each page. Giant Tongs definitely shows up in the first half of the book. Mm -hmm. The man in black glares at the woman. He stuffs the pages into his coat pocket. Grabs your duffel bag. Up to your room now. He orders. He nudges you ahead of him up the stairs. Forget the pages, he mutters. Ha! <laughs> the pages are the only thing that matters. So? You begin, nervously trying to make conversation. Are you one of the writers? He replies. Not one of the oh, writers. I did it. He replies angrily. The writer. The only one who knows how to create real horror and make the pages come to life. That must be hard to do. You respond. This guy has some ego. Still, you want him to calm down. He seems to get mad awfully easily. You must be really good. Or really bad. <laughs> the man in black bellows. He snickers at his own joke. He pushes you towards a room with an open door and shoves you inside. Tossing your bag onto the bed, the man in black tells you to make yourself comfortable. He shuts the door and locks you in. Go to page 88. All right, get comfortable. Wham, bam. Click, click. We've been... Okay, okay. I'm, I'm seeing some echoes for things that have already happened. Hey! You cry. Why are you locking the door? Hey! It's for your own safety. The man replies from the hallway. We're not locking you in. We're locking others out. Don't worry, I'll be back for you before soon. Before you can respond, you hear him walk away. That boy was right. Something terrible's going on here. You hurry to the window to see if you can open it, but no such luck. It's nailed shut. When you glance down, you discover a sheet dangling from the outside sill. This is the room of the boy that the boy escaped from. Only now those creepy people have made it escape proof. You need to come up with a plan. You take off your parka and fling it in onto the bed. A paper flutters to the floor. The man in black missed a page. You notice writing on both sides. Your head snaps up when you hear footsteps. You have to hurry. Which side will you read first to make up your mind quickly? Toss up the paper in the air and read the side that lands face up. Toss this book um, <laughs> in the air. If it lands front cover up page 11, if it lands back cover up page 61. Do you think that on average this book is in worse condition than the other books if you were to find it in the wild because of this page? Yep. Yeah. Because... Absolutely. Uh, I do have a a, a very uh, I I've, I've just got like a moleskin notebook that is very easy to use for this. I got to so just send that yeah, you, flying through the air. You throw yours I I have a goosebumps book I'm going to throw. What did yours land on? Mine landed on the back cover. Mine did too. I wish I could. I wish I could lie. Alas, if sixty one's a death, I'm afraid that's the end of the book. Yep. All right, sixty one. 
All right. You read side two with a trembling voice. With one winner gone, you stand alone, and soon you'll face your foe. The writer's dream of a night of fear comes true and soon you'll know. What evil lurks in shadows gray where howling signals doom. Now you must choose, open the door, or open a wall of the room. It sounds as if the writer is writing to you. Is it the man in black? How could he have known that one winner would be gone and you'd be left alone? This page seems to be predicting the future, like those first pages that told about winning the contest. Is this page trying to tell you that you should... Wait, is this page trying to tell you what you should do right in this minute? <coughs> howling! It's out of the hallway! Is the howling... Is it the howling that signals doom? I mean... Like the, you know... What what other howling? <laughs> the poem says, The howling that signals doom. Is this howling that signals doom? <laughs> in, in this minute? Or is this the other howling? Is this the other howling? Is this the wall? <coughs> the howling is getting closer to your room. Sweat beads up on your forehead. You read side two again, hoping for a clue. What should you do? Open. Oh, oh. what should you do? <laughs> we had time to read side two again, but we didn't read side one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, I, hang on, I'm hearing some howling. Let me refer to side two again. Yeah. Well, open the door, you mutter, or open one wall of the room. How am I supposed to do that? You run your hands over the walls of the room, searching for an opening. Nothing. No secret panel, no hidden door. The only opening in the wall is a window. You'd have to break it to escape, and now it's almost dark out. Where would you go? Calm down. Calm down, you murmur. Think, think. You hear footsteps just outside your door. In a few seconds, it'll be too late to decide anything. Hurry! If you decide to face your foe, open the door on page 68. If you would like to open the wall, break the window on page 56. Uh, that doesn't feel like opening the... Uh, it just doesn't quite feel like it fits opening the wall enough for my heart. Yeah. Does it to you? To the point that this feels like it's now a story about someone else. Like, look, eerie similarities, but uh, we don't have an openable wall. Yeah. I mean, I like, I could understand it being the pull. Like, yeah, it's kind of opening the wall, but that would make more sense if we could open the window instead of break mm -hmm. it. It doesn't say break the wall, which even that's a stretch. So 68. Face our foe. Yeah, let's and, go for 68. Let's yeah, face our foe. I want to know more about him. That's true. Worst comes to worst, this is a great data gathering. Oops. You decide to open the door and face your foe. Gathering all of your courage, you slip your fingers around the doorknob. You take a deep breath and give it a hard twist. Oh, no. You forgot that you're locked in. You should <laughs> you release the knob, your eyes widen in <laughs> horror, as you see the knob turning by itself. Someone is on the other side, opening your door. You dart to the bed, jump under the covers, and pretend to be asleep. Sometimes it works with your parents. Through squinting eyes, you watch the door creak open. Your heart pounds when you see the long black cape approaching the bed. Get up, a voice whispers. We're getting out of here. Go to page 73. You're... <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes pop open. Standing at the foot of the bed is the boy that you met outside. What are you doing here? You exclaim. Could you clear your voice before you continue talking? <laughs> I thought you left. <clears throat> I just couldn't leave you here. Not after what I saw. I snuck back everything. I snuck back in rather and got to the key from behind the front desk. Hurry, they'll be coming for you any minute now. Who? You ask. The werewolves! The place is crawling with them! You stare at him. Werewolves? Are you crazy? You exclaim. No, I'm Cory McKenzie. And I know you're the other winner! Only because I didn't really write my story. I bet you didn't either! How'd you know? You stare at him. I, I found it. 
I found mine too. It's all part of the werewolves' revenge. They planted the stories for us to find, and then they staged a bogus contest to lure the writers here. Your mind reels. Can this all be true? But why? They're mad at horror writers and horror readers. They claim they get a bad rap. They want us to turn all into werewolves. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Mm. Werewolves are just upset that we're we're giving them a bad reputation, so they're gonna turn us into werewolves. They're unfairly maligned. It, it's just it's such a it's just such a distinguished and well thought out reason for a werewolf to be mad. <laughs> and know? also the plot of X Men One. Exactly. Is this X Men <laughs> One or Alan Wake? Hmm. Your mouth drops Why open. Why choose? <laughs> oh, there's a joke in there. Your mouth drops open. This is unbelievable. Go to page 15. You struggle to grasp what Corey's telling you. But why us? You ask. Corey shrugs. He looks embarrassed. I guess they figure kids who put their names on someone else's story deserve what they get. Oh, you hang your head. Come on. He urges. We don't have that much time. You grab your parka and follow him to the window. Corey notices that you hesitate. This is the best way out, Corey assures you. We don't want to run into any of them. Hmm. Also, the story said go to the door to face your foe. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Perhaps. Corey assures you, uh, or the best way out, Corey assures you. We don't want to run into any of them. He uses your duffel bag to smash the glass. In a flash, he's out the window and sliding down the sheet rope. You're right behind him. You glance up. The man in black glares out the window at you. Go to page 13. Also, I, I feel like we haven't addressed the fact that apparently Corey is wearing a big black cape. Wait, yeah. <laughs> he sees us! You cry. Corey scurries down the sheet into the night. You slide halfway, then jump to the ground. You follow Corey across the lawn. As you run, you find more loose manuscript pages. You snatch them up, stuffing them inside your parka. <laughs> you reach the edge of the woods and stop. You stare at a battered sign that reads, Lost World Woods. Enter at your own risk. A page falls out of your parka. You pick it up and read it to Corey. Aware the creatures of Lost World Woods. They await you at every turn. Only these pages will do you some good. Read them and try to learn. How to defeat your evil foes whose mission it is to take you. The moments you make from this moment on are the ones that will make or break you. Uh-oh. You breathe. Trouble. Should we go into the woods? It's either the woods or him. Corey says, pointing to the man running towards you. Uh. Hmm. Beware of the creatures of the Lost World Woods. They await you at every turn. Only the page will do you good. Read them, try and learn. Uh, the feature evil foes whose mission is to take you. I mean, okay. If the woods seem less scary than the man, go to 39. If the man seems less scary than the woods, page 54. I mean, at this point, how, do we do we know the man is scary? I mean... What lead do we have that the man is scary? He implied that maybe he said, like, you must be a really good writer. And then he went, or bad. I was like, I make that joke, too. So, mm. <laughs> like, am I evil? He, <laughs> maybe. He seems to be uh, writing the pages that he seems to be also aware are the future or occur in the real world. Yeah. Um, but if he's dropping this... He's dropping these pages, so he's writing this. Would he, I mean, is he writing himself as the evil? I guess, I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't think so. I agree with your first take of like, if the page is true to reality, and I'm, I'm working on the assumption that that's the case, but if the page is true to reality, then it is saying that Corey is our foe. Theoretically. The, At least I like that yeah. take better than, than the opposite, like whatever else it gives if, if it's not true. I prefer that take. Yes. But and I prefer that take to the degree that how to defeat your evil foes whose mission it is to take you, mm. I feel like could be Corey, Corey leading us into, into the, woods. the woods. Yeah. That I that's my that's my take, and I I again I like that take so much that I want to explore it and be upset if there's a worse version of reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the man seems I, less my, scary than the woods, or no? Man or seems less know? scary than the woods. My final take in this direction is that Corey has this weird, like I know everything kind of position, which like yeah. either could be we're in goosebumps and you met a person, and of course they know more about the world because they're an expository factor. Yeah. Or <laughs> it could be that he's part of the setup and he's like, you feel real bad about plagiarizing that story, don't you? And it's like, yeah, I guess I do. Like, he's the, yeah. the the parallel to teach us our lesson. Yeah. I mean, could be, could be. We'll see, we'll see. You'd mm -hmm. rather take your chances with the man. After all, there's two of you and only one of him. Pick up some rocks. You tell Corey. We'll fight him off. Right. Corey replies. He drops down and grabs some stones. The dark makes it difficult to see your target, but the moment the man is in firing range, you and Corey let loose. Yeah! The man throws his head back and howls as one rock hits him in his kneecap. Hear him howling? Corey exclaims. I told you there were werewolves here! Hit him again! What? Wait, what? What? I, <laughs> yeah, Corey's really reaching here. What a reach, Corey. You hurl another <clears throat> rock at the man. He ducks, but you fire another round fast. A couple of rocks bounce off the man's heavy jacket. He throws his arm up to protect his face. You'll be severely punished for this, the man declares in a muffled voice. He takes another step towards you. This guy is not backing off. Uh-oh. You cry. Now he's really mad. Go to page 91. Hold your fire, the man shouts angrily. You're in no trouble already. You drop to your, you drop your handful of rocks. That guy's voice sounds familiar. No way, Corey blasts you. Then you're hanging around with the wrong crowd. He backs away from you. You're one of them. No, I'm serious. You peer into the darkness, trying to get a better look at the man. Dad? You call out. Dad? Corey exclaims. You mean that monster is your dad? <laughs> He's totally freaking out. The man catches up to you. It's your dad, all right? And even in the darkness, you can see that he's annoyed. This could be bad. The contest people called. He says. They told me to come get you because you didn't really write that story. They said the same was true this young man. You kids should be ashamed of yourselves. But, 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 but Dad? You sputter. You try to explain about the werewolves and the man in black. Haven't you told enough stories? Your father responds angrily. Now march straight to the car. I'm taking you home. All I can say is I hope you've learned your lesson. Huh. Maybe it would have been less scary to go in the woods than to be in this much trouble with your dad. The end. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> is the, the is this is a different is a different person chasing us? I think a different person's chasing us now. I I guess so. Oh, okay. Also. What? How did the contest people learn that we didn't write that story yet? I'm upset. I'm upset. I mean, I guess we're going into the freaking woods. Turnitin doesn't exist for like another 20 years after this point. There's no sure. way to cross-reference this. Yeah. Jerks. Into All the right. woods. You shout. Hurry before he catches up. 
Together you dart through the pine trees. You stop when you can no longer see the lodge or the man in black. You lean against a tree and slide to the ground. Corey slides down next to you. He's breathing just as hard as you are. You rest for a few minutes and you start to shiver from the cold. We should keep going, you say. They'll be looking for us. Corey nods. Maybe we can find a road. He glances around. There's a path. Let's follow it. You and Corey head along the path. Uh oh. You murmur. Footsteps. You and Corey pick up speed. So do the footsteps. You look back, but you don't see anyone. You and Corey duck behind a tree. The footsteps come closer and closer. You peer around the thick tree trunk and gasp. Silhouetted against the night sky, the man in black stands alone on the path. Wait. <laughs> the man in black stands on the path, and he's not alone. Go to page 121. <laughs> I, I like the idea of the man in black stands alone on the path, and he's not alone. <laughs> I know. That's, I, I almost just let it ride, but... I <laughs> The man in black is pulled forward by a huge dog on the end of a thick leash. Both the man and the dog sniff the air in all directions. The man takes a few steps in your direction. You and Corey press yourselves flat against the tree trunk and hold your breath. Seconds seem like hours. You wait and wait and wait until you feel as if your lungs will burst. Go to page 135. Not goosebumps without a good old, my lungs are about to burst. Mm-hmm. It seems that's the right degree of, like, not too visceral, but definitely clearly quite visceral. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the man shouts orders to the dog. Find, find oh, them. Oh, man. Find them. Find them. That's the dog talking. That's the dog hearing the orders. Find them. Okay. That's what, that's what mine was. <laughs> yeah, you know you can't hold your breath much longer. Just when you think you'll explode, the man and the dog take a few steps in the other direction. You and Corey let out your breath. That dog is going to pick up our scent, Corey whispers. We have to do something, and fast. You agree. The dark clouds roll away, and a full moon shines down from the black sky. You press yourselves tighter to a tree, hiding from the moon's bright light. You hear a blood-curdling howl. Wow. Corey murmurs. What kind of dog is that? You can't help yourself. You have to peek around the tree. It's not the dog howling. You gasp. It's the man. Dad? Turn to page Dad? 12 if you dare. Dad, why are you howling? I, I, I am very disappointed in you, son. <laughs> Corey takes a peek. You're right. He gasps. He's not a man anymore. He's... He's turning into a wolf! You watch in horror as the wolf man throws his head back to howl. By the light of the full moon, you can see patches of fur sprouting on his cheeks and forehead. Your heart pounds hard as the truth sinks in. Every word Corey said was true. There are werewolves here, and they are after you. It seems impossible, but there he is. You can even smell him. The wolf man seems more animal than human now, like an anamorph. His eyes have an evil gleam as he scans the area. Now he and the dog both sniff the air. They're going to find us. This is some Mickey and Pluto stuff. You know? Mm -hmm. You whisper to Corey. Maybe he just wants the manuscript pages? Corey suggests. If we dump them here and run, maybe he'll leave us alone. We need them to get out of this woods, remember? You argue. The manuscript said the pages will help us. You don't really believe all that stuff, do you? Corey asks. I'm not sure what I believe. You answer. I didn't believe in werewolves either. If you decide to leave the manuscript pages for the wolfman, go to page 58. If you decide to take them with you, page 81. I mean... There's two different ways in my yes. mind to think about this. One of them is that leaving the manuscript pages could count as the manuscript pages helping us. Mm -hmm. That's a clever Slows take. Slows down the, this person. Uh, the other one is we've only read one side of yeah. one of the manuscript pages. And I'd really like to see the other. Yeah, I, I will say, like, I like your first take. I think it's very clever. Perhaps, perhaps too clever for Goosebumps. Uh, 
and I do have a morbid curiosity about literally, I don't know, any of the other parts of the manuscript. So mm-hmm. I am being drawn to that with Let's a go to page eighty one. It, it's and like take in, these with us. It's like in Jackbox where you're playing a game and it's like you're picking the answer that you actually think is right, but then I'm giving you a thumbs up because I like your answer better. Mm-hmm. That that's kind of what just happened. Uh, so. 80, 81? 81. We need these pages. You insist? Let's go. You and Corey take off running. You hear the wolfman and his dog behind you. Luckily, you and Corey have a head start. You lose them for a few moments and you come to a shallow stream. Lying next to the stream is a huge hollow tree trunk. Even on its side, the tree is almost as tall as you. And it's so long, you can't wait to see, you wait. You can't see the other end of it. Now what? Corey asks. I say we start using these pages to help us survive. You pull out a page and read it to Corey. When faced with the choice of tree trunk or stream, go into the water or prepare to scream. It couldn't be any clearer than that. You exclaim. I guess we should go into the water. We'll freeze. Corey argues. And that moon is so bright, he'll find us again in no time if we don't hide somewhere. I think we should ignore that stupid manuscript. Let's keep going. What will you do? Wade into the stream on 80, crawl in the trunk on 65, or if you keep running, 132. Excuse me? Uh, what is the option for prepare to scream? Yeah. Uh, where is, um, be in for a scare? <laughs> I... I mean, have I, has the have the pages done proven anything? Like they've not been wrong yet, and they especially won't be wrong if it turns out Corey has something against the pages because the pages are accurately describing Corey as our villain. Yeah, I mean, again, it's, I I'm so hopeful, but I think that wading into the stream also we're on page eighty one, and that's just a nice quick. Uh, zoop up by one page that's that sounds kind of absolutely actually uh you know what hold on (laughs) no (laughs) you and Corey decide to follow the advice on the page the dog won't be able to pick up our scent in water you tell Corey. you step into the icy water and start wading downstream stay close to shore to take advantage of the cover of the thick bushes that line your line the sides you hear the dogs barking echo through the forest From the sound of it, you can tell that the dog stopped where you and Corey went into the water. It worked! Corey exclaims. I think we lost him! You may have lost the dog, but you didn't lose me! The man in black bellows from the edge of the stream. Terror grips you. There's no way, no getting away from him now. But the manuscript! You cry. It told us to go into the stream! (sighs) The man laughs. (laughs) Ha! <laughs> Fool! I wrote that manuscript! You smack your forehead. Of course he'd know exactly where you'd go. You were doomed the moment you picked up that story, right from the very beginning. Which is why this is... The end! Aw, oh, man. Does this canonically say, no, we're not right, we don't... Our cool, cool version of the story is not the true? I guess so. Apparently, unless... Unless it just, you know, it's one of those things where we get a completely different (laughs) canon in, like, a Mm -hmm. few pages down. So I guess the question is then, do we crawl in the trunk or do we keep running? Because we actually had three options. Mm. I almost still want to disobey Corey and keep running rather than crawl inside the tree trunk. That's true. That's true. It keeps keeps an option open. Also... Final part is, like, even if if we are still in the contiguous world of the man in black wrote the manuscript and therefore knows all the things, like, if he checks the stream and we're not there, number two, tree trunk! (laughs) It's true. He he knows the other option. So this is the only one where we're picking an option that's not kind of Mm -hmm. listed. Exactly. We're we're deciding against what was pre-written for us. Yeah, by picking the other pre-written thing. That's yeah. slightly different. That's this is it's as close as you can get to like the uh, you know the video game silly ending of of waiting around and 
not doing what you're told. It's the closest you can do in this book, aside from literally being like, well, I closed the book, so I win. Like, is just saying, on the page, it said two options, but on the bottom, it was like, or third. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, oh, is this the correct oh, page? Nope. Sorry, there's Fine. an ant on my desk. Just a very tiny ant, and he's been really bothering me. Okay. Is all good? Run! You cry? Deeper into the woods, away from the path. You leap over branches. You dash under tree limbs. Corey follows you through the dark forest, and finally you come to a stop gasping for air. I don't hear them, Corey says. We must have lost them. We lost us, too, you admit. I have no idea where we are. Perhaps I can be of help. A crackly voice declares, You jump as a bearded man carrying a walking stip stick steps out from behind a tree. He looks old and frail. Who are you? You demand. Are you from the lodge? The lodge? No, no, they won't have me. The man laughs. <laughs> I'm just a nature walker, that's all. I know every stick in this forest. If you're lost in Lost World Woods, I can lead you out. Follow me. Look at his walking stick, Corey whispers. Your eyes open wide. It's got a wolf head handle. The eyes, the fur, and the fangs are all carved in perfect detail. Made it myself, the old man declares proudly. Take a closer look. He holds the stick out to you, and you reach for it. Go to page 90. I mean, we, so theoretically, we should be prepared to scream mm. on this. At some path. point between now and the end of the book. Yeah. Don't touch it, Corey warns. It might be a trick. It's just a stick. You shake your head, shrugging off Corey's warning. You take a step closer. Oh, yes, that's right. The old man agrees. A stick can't do you any harm. Here, take a closer look. Oof. Oh. <laughs> you take the stick from him. Your fingers start tingling. An electric shock crackles through your veins. Your body shudders with a powerful force. You feel heat shooting through you. It must be coming from the stick. You try and throw it down, but you can't. It's as if it's stuck to your fingers. Help! You cry. Get this thing off me! You glance around, but the old man has vanished. Corey grabs a heavy tree branch. Wham! He smacks the head of the walking stick with all his strength, and the impact sends you reeling backwards. Suddenly, the walking stick comes alive! <laughs> Orange lights flash from the wolf's eyes. The beast opens its mouth and exposes sharp fangs, dripping with foamy drool. The wolf head turns towards Corey. With a power totally out of your control, the walking stick swings your arm back and forces you to strike Corey! Go to page 83. <laughs> Your sudden attack catches Corey by surprise. It's me! Corey cries, scurrying away from you. Why are you hitting me? I'm your friend! Corey ducks, just escaping another hard hit. Your, arms f your arm feels as if it's being pulled out of its socket. Corey darts behind a tree. Come back! You shout after him. It's not my fault, it's the stick! The bearded man appears before you again. To your horror, he begins to transform. Terrified, your eyes widen as the old man changes into a werewolf. Go to page 124. If the werewolves are upset that we are writing them unfairly as demons... Mm-hmm. Maybe, like, give us a treat or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, maybe consider not having a demonic staff. Maybe less, uh, flo like, foaming bloody fangs. You mm. know? Like, biting me upon my friend? Perhaps? We'll see. The wolf, maybe it'll, maybe it'll call it out. The wolf man bears fangs that could snap you in half in one bite. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> the creature howls. I thought if I got rid of the stick, I would be rid of the werewolf curse. But look at me. 
<laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking. You. Oh, okay. You assure the werewolf. Give me the stick. The creature growls angrily as he circles you. Only with the stick can I have a few precious hours as a normal man. Without it, I'm doomed to this form always. You feel the power of... Wait, what? I... I have been cursed so that I am a werewolf when I don't have this stick. I yep. thought getting rid of this stick would help. <laughs> yep. Okay. That appears to be how it goes. All right. You feel the power of the stick weakening. The wolf head returns to its wooden form, and the stick is just a walking stick again. But you know the stick has tremendous power. You have no idea what the werewolf will do if you give it back to him. He might attack you as soon as you hand it over. Maybe you should consult the manuscript, but do you have time? The werewolf is looking impatient. If you give the stick to the wolf man, go to page 113. If you hold him off long enough to read a page of the manuscript, go to page 47. Sorry. We had to re recheck out our digital book. Mm -hmm. So was, if you give the stick to the wolf man, go to page 113. If you hold him off long enough to read a page from the manuscript 47. So, yeah, slightly strange to be afraid to give the stick to the wolf man in the scenario. Mm. I, I do find that I do find that odd. And now we and yet and yet reading more of the manuscript i but what we know the manuscript and the other line is false i know do we want to see if there's continuity because then if there is continuity in that we can probably write the manuscript off for the rest of the book let's do it 47 hold him off long enough to read a page from the manuscript i want to know if this is a, a a treasure that i can soul bind yeah maybe i want to attune to this stuff maybe indeed Oh, shoot. Where are we at? 47? 47. You don't want to take any chances. Also, we get information regardless. You don't want to take any chances. You grab a page from your parka and read it fast. To save yourself from the wolfman's bite, which grows more deadly in full moon's light, this piece of paper is all you'll be needing. Run away now while the wolfman is reading? What's so interesting? The wolfman snarls. Here! You shout, tossing the page on the ground as it flutters in the wind. Read it for yourself! Your trick worked. Just as you hoped he would, the wolfman chases after the piece of paper, and you make a break for it. Run, Cory! You shout. Run! You hurl the walking stick away with all your might. You hope that no one ever finds it. <laughs> you hope that no one ever finds it. You and Cory race deeper into Lost World Woods, or at least you think you're heading deeper into the woods, but in no time at all, you find yourself at the very edge of a road. Yes! You and Cory declare together. Go to page 78. I, I do love... That's got to be, like, the most demoralizing way to be tricked. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, just... And then the stupid idiot read this page. Aw, oh, man! <laughs> God dang it. That would that would get me. I can't deny. Uh you come to the same ice. Look up and you see clouds in dust clouds in the shape of the people you're chasing. <laughs> ah! Yeah. Yeah. A little like the little burn streaks on the ground like they peeled mm -hmm. out. Yeah. You come to the same icy road that brought you into this nightmare. The bumpy mountain road the bus traveled along. In the distance, the lodge looms above you. Great! Corey exclaims happily. We made it! Not yet we didn't, you reply, remembering the terrible bus ride. It's a long way down the mountain. You trudge down the mountain road in silence. You shiver. Sure would be nice to have a ride right about now, you think. No sooner do you think the thought than two headlights come down the road. A car pulls up alongside of you, and the woman driving rolls down her window and speaks from the darkness inside the car. May I offer you two kids a ride? She asks in a friendly voice. If you take the ride, go to page 118. If you say no, go to page 32. Gift horse, mouth, face, etc. Teeth at 118. Yeah. I would rather be uh, yelled at for trusting. 
Hmm. Yeah, Corey says. Thanks, that would be great. Before you can stop him, Corey opens the back door and climbs into the car. It's a cold night to be out in the mountains. You hear the woman say to Corey. Sure is, Corey replies. He motions for you to get in. Well, she sounds friendly enough, and it really is freezing out here. You climb in next to Corey. You're right. It's freezing out there. Thanks for the lift. You shut the door. Instantly, the woman steps on the gas pedal. The car starts slipping and sliding down the steep, icy road. Slow down! You cry. It's too icy to go so fast! The woman ignores you. Is this another ghost driver? Did we? Is this check out time at the yep. dead end go tell? Like, my first thought was, like, are we going to find ghost bus again? Like, we'll see. Instead, she goes faster and faster. So fast the car spins completely around. You're no longer heading down the mountain. You're heading back to the lodge. Go to page 108. I want to meet the werewolf carnies. Werewolf carnies, please. What are you doing? You cry. You and Corey are thrown against each other in the back seat. We don't want to go up the mountain. We want to go back down. Now that you're heading this way, the full moon hangs low in front of you. The light shines directly into the car. In the rear view mirror, you finally get a glimpse of the driver. Surprising everyone. Her eyes burn a deep red. Her skin is ghostly pale. Blood red lips only partially cover a gleaming pair of fangs. The driver isn't an ordinary woman. What? <laughs> She's a vampire! A totally surprising new thing. everyone. I'm surprising everyone. Wait, I am surprised. She's a completely <laughs> different. Wait. Okay. <laughs> Didn't anybody ever tell you not to take a ride from strangers? She hisses. I was. I was gonna say. I do think that most Goosebumps books probably are afraid to to make a stranger getting car with stranger ending be good. <laughs> mm hmm. But. She hisses. Oh, yeah, yeah, this would make yeah. sense around this period of time. She hisses, speeding up the road. You're the guests of honor. You must come and accept your award for the best horror story. But I didn't write my horror story. You cry. Me either, Corey adds. Oh, but we didn't want you to write the best horror story. We wanted you to live it. Don't you see? The real horror is just beginning. And the story cannot end until we've put an end to you. Go to page 102. The car pulls up at the lodge. A crowd of vampires, werewolves, zombies, mummies, and hideous mutant creatures of every shape and size are standing out in front. Last and only stop, Twisted Tree Lodge, the vampire announces. Get out. A ghoulish figure with flesh hanging from its bones opens the car door. It gestures you and Corey to come out. Corey climbs out first. You're about to follow when you glance down. Lying on the floor is another page from the manuscript. You squint to read in the darkness. The story is only as real as it seems. Horror is only horror in dreams. Destroy all the pages one by one. The story ends when the last page is done. You know what to do. You yank the pages out of your parka and start ripping them to shreds one by one. Oh my god, that's an AI dungeon callback. Corey! You cry. Tear up the page! <laughs> Help me kill the story! Tear up the pages! <laughs> that's a, oh, I was that's... trying to insert the AI dungeon yeah. reference and then it just has it. It just has it. Oh god, that is... Okay, alright. Go to page 94. Corey reaches into the car and grabs a handful of manuscript pages. Together, you work furiously to rip each page into a million pieces. <laughs> and with every page you destroy, something amazing happens. The man in black, the vampires, the werewolves, zombies, mummies, mutants flatten into paper-thin figures. With every page torn, another monster falls to pieces. At last, you hold up the final manuscript page, the page that tells you how the story ends. You smile victoriously when you read. Two conquered the horrors the writers write. Two survived all the hits that they took. But the true winners are the readers who know to end horror, just finish the book. Yes, you think to yourself. Okay, now this is a little too meta. 
Now you're because now it's think is now it's not you the character. Now it's you the us. Yes, mm -hmm. you think to yourself, it's time to end the horror. It's time to finish the book. With that, you tear okay. <laughs> you tear the pa last page, the tiniest pieces of all, and stepping through the pile of shredded monsters and conquered fears, you and Corey walk shoulder to shoulder into the lodge and call home. The end. I mean, it is perhaps the ending of all endings. That is so ending. Mm -hmm. That's so ending. <laughs> I can't be mad. I don't dislike it. But boy, all of the fun ideas I had for what this book was going to be didn't happen. <laughs> yes. So it's like, a, I'm not upset with what I was given. But also, I unfortunately dreamed up something cooler along the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's one of those. Like, I thought we were going to get a... I thought it was the Man in Black was going to be R.L. Stein, and we were going to get a Stranger mm -hmm. Than Fiction. Like, mm -hmm. it was being written about us because he's R.L. Stein, and he is writing the... What's it called? Werewolves. And he's currently writing the Werewolf of Twisted Tree Lodge. Like... That was my that was my thought. I thought we were gonna get a mm -hmm. full on at least maybe there maybe there's a joke like a joke ending like that or something, but we did not get that. And then the manuscripts are true, but you have to like look into them slightly deeper and find like the double meanings of some of the words. That also was just would have been too like that would have been more fun to me as well. But mm -hmm. it's so strange because I'm not unhappy with the book because if I didn't you know, if all these thoughts weren't in my head, I really liked this one. I thought it was really good. Yeah, that, it, I'm pretty much in exactly the same position. Of there's a few things that they were playing with that I I was hoping to see, you know, function more in the world or represent the fun ideas that we could have had with them in the world. Uh, and maybe they do in other paths. Yeah, but this was still enjoyable, and also, I mean, thick with the, the Alan Wake kind of atmosphere to it as well. I yeah, I loved the I loved the setting. The writing felt the like just the writing itself felt maybe a little bit better than usual too. I I don't know. I I enjoyed it quite a bit. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I think that again, when Goosebumps is playing around with just like it's weird. It needs to either go like super ham on the theme or play like with just standard horror tropes. It actually like you would think that those books would be ones that are not as exciting, but I feel like they just ultimately they prove like why some of those common tropes work so well. Mm -hmm. I think just like something about a co like a, a lodge, you know, like horror about horror, like just mm -hmm. all these different things. They, they work well, they work well. And I, I liked it. I liked it quite, quite a bit curse us for making, a book that I really, really want to read, <laughs> you know? Uh, but Hey, I, I, I think that it's also like, I think that's also a celebration to be had uh, when you're reading a book and you do have those thoughts and like you get to a space that's kind of exciting as well. Even if it isn't the book, I think the fact that our, both of our brains went to a lot of those fun places is, you know it's like a it's like a participation trophy for the book to say this but like the mm -hmm. fact that it made our brains go there and we got to have those like those ideas of stories as well is almost just as good you know yeah we truly got to choose the scare even it's outside true. the words of the book it's true we we really we really really did and in such a in a book about such a, a meta topic we also had a a weird meta, meta exploration of our own here i guess uh but alas is there anything you'd like to uh shout out plug anything you want to something something only that if you have not done so and you would like to do so you can review the podcast on your favorite uh, podcast stream service app, etc. Uh, 
and help us grow the podcast by doing so. You can also subscribe to at turn to page on YouTube or at turn to page cast rather on YouTube, yeah. youtube.com slash at turn to page cast uh, for similar reasons. Also, there's a comment section there if you would like to interact with other people who are interacting with the story as well. It's true. That is, that is true. It's been very lovely. There's some like very lovely people over there. Uh, thank you for those nice comments. And uh, same same deal as usual. If you have uh, like if you don't want to interact on like YouTube, but you have something you want to send to us, turn to pagecast at gmail.com. Either if you just have something you want to send to us or you want to help us find some of the missing books that we're we've been looking for. I've shouted them out like a whole bunch at this point. Uh, but we'll have something else, hopefully, finally next week, kind of in regards to that topic as well, uh, to announce, but we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, but yeah, alas, the, the only way, dear listener, to end a podcast is to finish it. That's what I've heard. So. I tear up the outro. I tear up your ears so you may never listen to podcasts again. The only true end. Goodbye. The final podcast. Adios.